Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Hey Corner Crew podcast. I am your host, JJ Lang. With me, as always, are my two wonderful co-hosts. First, you know him, you love him, Nate the Little Goon Foss. Sup? <laughs> and secondly, with us, as always, the third man in our team, Sam the Statman Scully. I'm sorry, Dan the Statman Scully. We're going to beat that joke to death over and over yep. again at this point, aren't we? Dude, Nate literally set your phone name, at, like your name and his phone as Dan slash Sam Scully. So <laughs> That's going to just be the new running joke. Uh, so this past weekend, we did have some hockey games. We had two. Uh, the men did have a weekend off, which was kind of odd. But the ladies did have two games down in Pittsburgh or wherever the hell it is that Robert Morris is located because it's not technically Pittsburgh, but kind of is Pittsburgh, um, where there was some interesting action down there. So I'm going to pitch this over to Dan, and we're going to get going on the weekend for the ladies. Not much in the first in in Friday's game. Uh, other than four penalties, two of them to the same RMU player. <laughs> But no scoring, both goalies standing tall. Uh, Sophia in net for the Tigers. I have no idea who is the net for RMU. Uh, Emma Gorski? Yeah. Yep, she started the game. Um, Addy Alvarez decided to change that shortly after we came out of the intermission. Yeah, she did. With a helper from Emma Rowland, whose name is all over this box score. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. Beast. A beast. However, the Colonials would tie it up less than a minute later. <laughs> and the Tigers seem to have taken that personally. Because then, <laughs> then they ripped off four unanswered, three of them on the power play. Good God. Hey, we Rowland, said special Jordan teams is going to be a key. Athena Vazdane. I, I, I can't remember how to properly pronounce her name because I'm pretty sure it's wrong on our pronunciation guide. I thought it was Vazdani. I don't know. Athena, I'm probably saying your name right. Or wrong. I'm sorry. I can't even speak English today. <laughs> um... <laughs> Are Dan you remembering English. from last year? Yep. Dan I thought there was an English, English comment coming. <laughs> um, Colonials would try and claw their way back in the third with a couple of goals, but the Tigers would answer both of those. And we would get a football score for a final of 7-3 Tigers. Um, yeah, this game was a murder. Initial there, thought? there were more cross-checking penalties called in this game than there were RMU goals. That's there kind were of funny. Five cross checks in this game. And all three penalties in the third, or all four penalties in the third were cross checks. My mind is just a scrambled egg right now. I mean it's because it's because we didn't have any home. We, we games. did say going into this weekend. <laughs> yeah. We did say going into this weekend that special teams was going to be the key for us to help beat these guys because they're, I don't believe their power play was very good going into this week, going into this past weekend. Their penalty kill wasn't very good either. Yeah. And we capitalized by scoring three goals in the power play. So that's fantastic. That is what you want to be seeing. Sorry, four. Yeah, you're right. Our power play wasn't very good and we jumped up to about 15 and a half percent. So it's getting better. That's pretty good. I mean, we, we're now middle of the pack in the country, so keep yeah, that going. 32 saves for Sophia. Um, the Sophia had herself a game. The two RMU goaltenders combined for 31. Uh, let's see. Not, not a bad night in the faceoff dot, but not a great one either. Uh, 31 wins for the Tigers. <laughs> 32 losses because apparently we like the numbers 31 and 32 in this game. 19 saves for Sophia in the third period, by the way. Yeah, she what is shut with our teams? She shut them down. What Which is with our teams and giving up an ungodly amount of shots in the third period? Both teams. Like, oh my lord. 
Can we not for like once, please? Yeah, it makes it I mean, interesting. I I attest it to <laughs> they also didn't play for an entire week before. That's fair. And, and then they get another one they off had to this travel. coming weekend. Yeah, and then I they mean, had to travel. So I mean, they came out in the second and just said, guess what? Eat this. Right. <laughs> and, then, and then just took a nap in the third. I'm like, can we not give up 19 shots? Like, like listen, we won 73. Either way you look at it, it was a great game for the for the ladies. You can't take like great game for them, especially penalty like pe- like penalty kill and power play wise, they had some big improvements there. That was great to see. But like, oh my god, 19 shots on goal in the third is insane. <laughs> I think that, that 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 to me is the only blemish on what would otherwise have been a fantastic on what is a fantastic game. 16 blocks as well. Four of them by Emma Pickering because she covers the entire sheet of ice somehow. She's so good. <laughs> She's so good. She's like the Flash. She just darted well, so everywhere. There was, there was one where she just like, she had the puck behind our net. Like she picked up the puck behind our net, and then all of a sudden she was in the offensive zone. <laughs> and I'm like, it's like I blinked, and she was in the offensive zone. I'm like, what the. And I think that's a thing that we've lacked in recent years, too, is speed. And now that we have it, it's like, I don't know what to do. (laughs) Emma Pickering reminds me of that one kid in high school who's playing, like, kickball, and he's playing shortstop, but he runs around to every single base or every part of the outfield to hunt the ball down. Like, that's literally Emma Pickering on a a hockey rink. That's what she's doing. She just hunts the puck everywhere. But okay. (laughs) I mean, it makes sense, doesn't it? Um, how about sixteen shots on the power play too? Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. That's a they great didn't just have see. a lot. They had six on one, and the sixth one went in, which is nuts. But they also gave up sixteen shots on four power plays for Robert Morris. So, and they gave up four shorthanded shots. Yeah, <laughs> goaltender. <laughs> good to have one. Better to so have a good one. Playing really well right now. Better to have we, more than we have one good one. have any confirmation on what's up with Sarah yet or no? Well, she, she played, played Saturday. Saturday. So okay. She's fine. <laughs> Which oh, I, I, just, I was just curious. I, I get it. I get why you play her, especially with all that time off, because she she would have been off for about a month. Yeah. And you don't want that. But, I mean, ride the hot hand. I mean, Sophia's been really good. And, I mean, yeah, you don't want Sarah to... You know, especially because the game she the last game she played was a tough one. But you know what I mean? Like so I mean yeah. kinda and not that mean. she played not that she played bad, but good win Friday. It, here's the thing. I will I will take any win with this team this year, especially with how CHA is going and how close it is. Cause again, I I, I really do think that this league is wide open that anybody can win it if they get hot. Hey, so and any any team can get huge. hot and go on a run, and two points on the road is huge. Yep. Two points on the road is massive. So, especially with the games you have coming up, not this weekend, but the weekend after. Home and home Syracuse. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk we'll talk about that next week. But that's those are two games I feel like you need to win. Mm-hmm. So let's talk let's talk Saturday first because that take game it. that game had some big implications. Two points. Love it. Um I I it's it's almost like these two teams had a, a an agreement before this series not to score in the first because it didn't happen Saturday either. <laughs> um not that I would have known if I didn't look at the box score. <laughs> Stream not working. Flow sucks. Thing is, though, it yeah. wasn't. Can we Flo's just go to fault. ESPN Plus now? Oh wait, hang on, guys. This is a Syracuse broadcast. How do you screw that up so many times? Oh my god! I Ugh. counted at least five in the game Friday. Can I, I was say they... during the game Saturday? But I mean, come on, like, I don't care if it's a bare bones broadcast and there's like nothing to it. At least try. I mean, the only thing we have in common with Syracuse is we're both orange and both from New York. Yeah, but we had a giant tiger head on the front of ours. I know. (laughs) 
and let's face it, their rink isn't exactly nice. So, like, you know, it's not like you're sitting three stories up and can't see anything. Like, you very clearly Does can this tell look like a fruit? <laughs> no! Does the block so ass look like a fruit? Really pointing at the jersey. No. Thank you. No, it doesn't. Also, I mean, it, my God. I, I, Being I, named after colors is stupid anyway. I'm... I love what you two did with the Instagram story, but at the same time, I don't think you understand how much of an earworm that fight song is to me. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was me. I, I was just about, I was just about to say props to Nate for putting the Syracuse fight song on there and just trolling the the RMU. Now I guarantee I you, like, like 90, I like the Syracuse fight song. I, I mean, I guarantee it. you, ninety percent of the people who were in the Instagram were like, so "Why much. is the Syracuse fight song on this story <laughs> post? What is Good, up with keep this? it that way." <laughs> I like it that way. <laughs> Clueless. Hey man, it's another reason to be in a Discord. You'll see all these things. <sighs> well, because I meant to post the freaking meme, but I didn't. It didn't upload, and I was at that point. I'd already posted something else, so so I can't post it now. Whatever. Saturday. Saturday, no scoring in the first, despite an RIT power play. Uh, they gave up three shorthanded shots. Um, the player who was in the box twice to uh, to start the penalty summary for RMU was the one that would eventually put them up one nothing. Shaylin Snow, unassisted. She's good. Yeah. Yeah. She's good. Sure. Takes a lot of penalties, but Whatever. she's good. I don't like that she's good, but sure, she's good. No, but she is. I'll give credit where credit's due, man. It, yeah, depending on the team. Depending on the team. Niagara. <laughs> Syracuse. Yeah. Only I think you and I have just, I'm okay with Syracuse. I think you and I have just mutually agreed to band together and just hate Syracuse just because Dan likes Syracuse. <laughs> That's the whole purpose of this podcast. Wait until it's, we play them. Is to just crap on Dan when we play his hometown. I'm pissed we can't go to Tennedy. Oh yeah, I'm sad. wait, wait, you we mean don't have to go there this Tenity. year. Ice dump. <laughs> hey, if I didn't have a dentist appointment at four o'clock tomorrow, I would totally go watch them play Clarkson down at Tennedy. Oh, I know you would. Watch him get killed. Watch Clarkson put up 25 goals on him in the first I, period. I also know <laughs> SP's goaltending coach now, so. That's fair. Maybe tell him to have them wake up a little bit. <laughs> I'm not going to be not mean to good, Nick. He? He's not, not very good, is he? <laughs> We're like, hey, hey, man, stop giving him melatonin. Keep him awake during the game. Good Lord. It's like they're asleep when those pucks go by him. Nicole Ness would tie the game up down to RMU. <laughs> the seamless transition back. She's been she's been really good this year. Yeah, yeah. she has. This up. is the Nicole Ness we all thought we were getting when she came mm-hmm. from St. Cloud. And she I think I don't know any like injury acclimating, whatever. She's finally she seems comfortable. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it was a role thing, too, but I think she's really relishing that role where, you know, she's not eating top line minutes either. So she's been really good. Good, good bounce back year, especially her senior season, too. And and she's not afraid to clean up the puck in front of the net. I, no, I think she's not. that's how she's scoring. Yeah, exactly. You get those ugly rebounds and just throwing them back in. Doesn't matter how it goes in. They only ask for money. Down there. We would be level at the second break, 1-1. One, one. Uh, another connection from Emma Rowland to Addie Alvarez rips one right off the crossbar and down into the net. Um, oh, that si- sound. Simultaneously, oh. Dom and I both sent what a shot in the game thread. <laughs> <laughs> When I went back and watched it, I my knees buckled at the sound. It's just like, oh yeah. And then maybe I, I don't not... know what sound is more satisfying: 
that the sound of a the crossbar goal or the sound of a doink field goal. Like I don't know what's. Oh, better. it's crossbar. It's cross <laughs> crossbar or post goal any day of the week. I don't know. I feel like especially the at home. Kind of funny. I love it at home because it's. Ping, crowd noise, goal horn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's actually kind of true. That's it's, very true. Oh, the oh. only the only football goalpost moment that I might put above your average uh, is the Cody Parkey double doink against the Eagles. The double the doink. Double <laughs> doink. <laughs> and actually, if you want to count... Sorry to any Bears fan listening to this. Dude, Al... <laughs> no. Oh my god, Al Michaels call in that game. Oh my god, it went off it twice. That's impossible. He did it again. <laughs> and, and actually, if you want to count a human hand as a doink, that was a triple doink because somebody did yeah, get a fingertip. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Cody Parkey. Forever a legend. Him, anyways. <laughs> Forever a legend in Chicago. Are Cody all Parkey the and wrong Scott Norwood, reasons. both being famous for being hey. players that whiffed stuff. <laughs> hey, unfair. Unfair. <laughs> Double doink and wide right. Both of them fit in the Unfair. same category. <laughs> Two minutes on sports for like on JJ. Yeah, unnecessary roughness. 15-yard penalty. Listen, I'm going to say... No, nah, I'm not even going to say it. Never mind. Move on. Speaking of goals off the crossbar, that's how RMU would tie the game. About halfway yep. through the third. <laughs> Man, what a transition for that one. <laughs> Dan is on one today. <laughs> <laughs> on one what? We won't say, apparently. <laughs> you know what you're on. A lack of belief. <laughs> That's all of us. But we're all giggling like a bunch of kids right now. I didn't get home till 10.15 last night. <laughs> so I the parking lot for an hour and a half. Dude, that's Sounds like, like me to leave The parking lot is insane. <sighs> um, unfortunately, the Tigers would give up a shorthanded goal late in the third, uh, and that would be the game winner. They would pull Sarah out of the net and try and get an extra attacker goal. Just wasn't meant to be. Didn't give up an empty netter, which is a plus, of course. But yeah, that's good. They just couldn't get it over the blue line. It was like RMU. They great. Great trap in the really neutral good. zone. Yeah, it was. Defense. Yeah, thirty saves for Sarah, uh, double digits in two out of the three periods. Thirty-two saves for Maggie Hatch and Net for the Colonials. Uh, not as good at the faceoff dot Saturday. Twenty-five wins, thirty-eight losses. Got it. Got to win faceoffs. I don't know how much that's the difference in the game, but it's Could help. up there. You never know. It would help. You never know. I mean, Robert Morris had a played a great. They, they adjusted very well. Yes, and, and they, even they then, fixed, they fixed their penalty kill. They they were. I think. I think Friday they weren't as aggressive on the kill as they were Saturday. I think that. I think that's what changed, and I mean, it shows they had four shots. On yeah. Saturday, and only gave up two. So, and you know, it, you know how we were talking uh, in the last couple of weeks about how for a while there was a stretch of time where the RIT men's team, shortly after they went D one, just could not seem to win on Saturdays. Yeah, it almost feels like RMU is doing the opposite. They're mm-hmm. they. They may or may not win Friday, but they're going to claw their way back Saturday any way they can. It doesn't matter if they get blown out 9-2, 7-3. They're going to make it a close game Saturday. Even their games against Clarkson. They, got blown out. they lost 5-1 Friday and then only lost 2-1 Saturday. And I, if I remember right, they had a chance. They just ran out of time. Yeah. I mean, that, and... First two games of the year, they lost the Union five two, and then won overtime the next night. I mean, this is a good hockey team they have. It, it almost it, just seems it like it takes again, them a day to get going. It takes them a day to just get the to get the roll going, and then once well, they get, it, I don't even think it's that. Fat. I just think they they're good at making adjustments. Well, and as the season progresses, that could 
become instead of adjustments from Friday to Saturday from the second yeah. period to the third period. Right. And I mean it's they helping could them a become lot a scary team tomorrow. down the stretch. Yeah. They could. I think I mean I said it. I, I really do think that anybody can get hot in this conference and go on a run. All six teams, even Syracuse. And I know we're crapping on them a lot, but I all yeah, they, they have the ability to do that, that and and they're not they're not a bad squad. They they just they've had a, some tough breaks this year. Uh should we do scores around the league so we can get to the current standings right now? Sure. Before we preview next week. Uh Syracuse brought Lindenwood to town. The visiting Lions won four three on Friday and the teams tied four four Saturday. Um not a result that you would have guessed if you had watched the last couple of seasons. <laughs> no. No. Penn State heads Flint. up to Erie and splits with Mercyhurst. Uh, the Nittany Lions got shut out 4 nothing Friday, but came back and won 3 1 on Saturday. There's another example. Anybody in this league? Yep. Anybody in this league? And that's. That's as much an opportunity as a scary thought for us all at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got to be the team that they talk about when they say any team in this league. There were two majors in Saturday's Mercyhurst Penn State game. Anybody well, get suspended? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, Ooh. Across, the, the across. First anyone gets suspended. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> a cross check for Penn State and five in a game for contact to the head for Mercy. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Somebody got a little slap happy in that last. What one. are we doing? <laughs> it's the UFC match. We talking about? <laughs> she had a five in a game. <laughs> Good Lord, Thea. Oh, man. What are we doing? <laughs> I'm going to go find that later. There you are. <laughs> um, so four minutes they, left in the third. Got Dan, go, go, go ahead and do score. Go ahead and do the up the week's upcoming games, and then I'll go through and do the standings. So uh, we don't have any conference games this week, but there's plenty going on in the league other than we're not playing. Um, Clarkson heads down 81 to Syracuse uh, for a 5 o'clock start on Tuesday. So by the time you watch this podcast, it'll be over with. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Look at the by, the later. by the time you watch this podcast, you will have seen just how badly Clarkson has absolutely beaten the absolute hell out of Syracuse by the time those I, I can't wait for a miracle for Clarkson, to be pulled for Syracuse on Skytop. <laughs> Yeah, Syracuse to pull out a two to one, gave up sixty five shots to Clarkson <laughs> Miracle. Some, yeah, somehow wins. Scored a late goal in the third to win two one. It'll be karma <laughs> for you guys bad mouthing Nick Harper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> worth it. Hey, I'm not bad mouthing him. I'm bad mouthing his goalies. One of you said that he that he was bad. It was probably JJ, but. Um, that would be me. Uh, <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll own that one. More than half of the games uh, this weekend are listed in Central Time. RMU heads to Nashville to play BU on Friday in the Smashville Showcase. And then they'll play Minnesota State at 3 Central on Saturday. Oof. Lindenwood <laughs> brings Stonehill in, 6 Central and 3 Central. Penn move. State heads to Dartmouth, yeah, those are 6 Eastern and 2 Eastern. Those games are on ESPN+. Plus. Penn State is yet to play a home game in the month of November, and they didn't play any in October. <laughs> what? How have they not played a home game yet? They have not played a home game. So all of their games have already been away. That's actually kind of they've, insane. They've, oh, no, they've play, they played two home games at the end of September. <laughs> That's so dumb. But they All have right. 
Um, they have a ton and... of home games coming up. <laughs> I said they probably have like 12 in a row, don't they? One, two, three, four. And... They only have four away games after this weekend. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Yeah. And Syracuse and Clarkson finish up the other half of the, well, 81 doesn't go all the way up to Potsdam, so I guess I should call it the Route 11 rivalry. Um, you can call it the Route 81 rivalry if you want to. <laughs> we understand. That, that would be Interstate 81. And they're rerouting 81 anyway. Sorry! <laughs> oh, Good lord, my god, Scully. <laughs> So, Clarkson hosts Syracuse in the second half of the Route 11 rivalry at 3 on Saturday. <laughs> so, currently the standings as they are live for CHA. Uh, the lifeless peel of Syracuse has managed to actually get a point. They are still dead last, but they no longer have zero points. They have one. Uh, Lindenwood it remains in fifth with five conference points. RIT and Mercyhurst are both tied for third with six conference points. Robert yeah. Morris resides in second with eight, and Penn State is lonely at the top with ten. Now, I'm pretty sure if the season were to end today... Which it does not. No, but because I'm trying to figure out how this tiebreaker works. Because we both have six Mercy games Hurst, played. Mercyhurst is head-to-head because they have a regulation win. Okay. Ours that makes sense. Time. Is that how that okay. works? That's I'm pretty annoying. sure. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I don't know if that's actually the tiebreaker, but it makes sense. Because this on here says, this on here says for them, it says they have, each team has three wins and three losses in conference. RIT has one overtime win and Mercyhurst has one overtime loss. So that's kind of, I mean, obviously the, that's that one game that we beat them in overtime, but who knows? Yeah, I, I All don't I know, know what... is that this list looks very drastic. It looks, looks not drastic, but this list looks different. Should we? Well, because the CHA more? website has us in third. What the? So maybe we are ahead of them then. Okay, where can I find the tiebreakers? Because now I'm curious. But I mean, if we had theoretically, like, let's say we had swept. Robert Morris this past weekend. We're sitting in second, second and they're tied with Mercy Hurst for third. And that's why Saturday feels like a missed opportunity. Yeah. At the same at the same time, though, we're still within striking distance. Be- right, but it, it put us from being three points up in a playoff spot to one. Mm, and a Lindenwood team that has shown that they can beat you already this year. But what are the tiebreakers? It's going to be interesting to see what what happens with this next series, but we won't get to that till next week, sadly. Dan, where are we even find the tiebreakers? Uh, I'm looking in the media guide because that seems like a logical place. But <laughs> I'm also looking at Syracuse. I'm also looking at Syracuse's record this year. They are three ten and two. That is brutal. My God, that really sucks for them. But if you search the yeah. word tiebreaker in the media guide, it doesn't come up once. So great. I mean, I'm I'm looking at CHN, so that's also my wrongdoing is that. So who knows if we're even right, but because if it's head to head and we have the same conference record, I guess <laughs> technically we have An, an extra win in there, right? No, no, we're tied. Is it we have possible? Three wins, it's goals three losses, four. four teams do. If it comes down to goals four, I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> that's three, kind of three, that's oh, I don't know. So CHA has us in third, and it, the only way it makes sense is we have one more conference win than Mercyhurst does. Uh, no, we don't. Then So why are we listening? It's either overall record or, or goals for. There's no way it would be overall record. 
Does Mercyhurst have more goals for? No, we yeah, have. Yeah, because they scored. Conference goals for. CHA has us in third. That's all that matters. We're going to go with that then and move on. Because I'm not going to put that. If it you is know, it's, it's going to be something blatantly obvious in there. Somebody's <laughs> going to point it out in Discord and all three of us are going to feel stupid. Yes. I mean, Nate, even if even if, if we finish in fourth, we play Mercyhurst anyway. So we avoid so we avoid Penn State. No, no matter what if we happens. finish in fourth, we play Penn State. Doesn't Penn State play the bottom seed? Which, which is, is Mercyhurst. Not everybody's oh, right. making it in CHA this that's year. That's right. I forgot about that. My bad. I'm thinking. Well, even Atlantic, if that was ball. even if that was the case, okay, we're in third. We play Syracuse at home in the quarterfinals. Which is the way it should be. <laughs> and Nate gets all mad. We have an extra week in the schedule. That they're going to just waste and do nothing with. Our tournament ends the weekend before every other tournament in the country. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Oh, man, that's funny. And this is one of the many reasons we will never have Michelle on the podcast. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> nah, we're going to get Michelle one day. One day we'll pull that Dude, off. Dude, I my list of complaints would be like a scroll. Like, you know in the cartoons <laughs> when they open the scroll and it just keeps rolling? It just rolls for two miles. Yeah. Now, it has gotten shortened because I do like some of the things she's doing. And Gino Binda has been a million times better than his father. But Thank God. Can I also say that what we should do is we should see if like athletics can get an interview with her and then we just hijack the interview. <laughs> we just like don't. she's gonna be a G- show, like, she's gonna be a GPC in two weeks. Oh, that's true. We should just I'm get a so, giant whiteboard that says come on the second. pod, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle, we love you. <laughs> come on the come pod. On pod. Tommy did she see. She seems cool enough that she would, though. I feel like right? she'd do it. Like, Dan no. is like looking at us like you guys are a bunch of effing idiots. <laughs> I'm also uh, just imagining how pissed off Tim probably would it was get. Annoying. <laughs> oh no, Tim would no! Be... I that would be the most serious interview we've ever done. Tim would probably have a fit with us for doing that. Uh, Tim would request to be on it. <laughs> to make just sure that like we don't do anything off, stupid off screen just making sure we're not doing anything stupid he's just lurking yeah. he's he's secretly sitting in Dan's room just waiting <laughs> waiting for something to be said Dan's room Dan's in the press box he can sit right next to him that's <laughs> true he can sit in the press box right next to him that's very true we forgot about that uh, should we move on to the upcoming men's series now now that we've gone totally off the rails for the 900,000th right. time. Let's go through AHA first. So looking at the Atlantic hockey standings right now, it's things are kind of interesting. So in dead last, after winning their first conference game of the year, actually their first game of the year entirely, uh, the treadless tank that is the Army Black Knights are still in dead last with four points. Robert Morris resides in 10th with six Canisius is in ninth with seven, continuing their absolutely stellar start to their title defense. Um, AIC is in eighth with nine points. Now they've only played four games, so there's a big, there's a huge thing for AIC there. They could easily jump quickly. Uh, Mercyhurst is in seventh with ten. Uh, sorry, they are tied with Air Force for six with ten points apiece. Uh, Bentley is in fifth with twelve points. Holy Cross is in fourth with thirteen. Niagara is in third with 13 as well. Sorry, they're both tied for third with 13 points. Uh, Sacred Heart is in second with 16, and RIT still remains in first with 17 points. Now, the big things about this to look at are, number one, AIC has only played four conference games. That's nuts. They are going to make a jump quickly. Unless they lose a lot of those games, they they will move up fast. Holy Cross already has... Four conference, sorry, it already has ten non, ten conference games played total. We went Holy cross! It's not JJ's yeah, internet this time. It's just JJ. It's actually just JJ. <laughs> just me fumbling over things. <laughs> Too many conference points, games in hand. Also, Dan, you did not just say Holy Cross like you were saying Holy Cow. That's ridiculous. Um, yeah. So you they have ten did. conference. They have 10 conference games played with 13 points. They're kind of digging themselves into a slight hole. 
Uh, Niagara also has one more game more than we have conference wise. I mean, they're Mayo. still hosting a playoff series if it ends today. So yes, true. <laughs> um, they still get so, the buy. Yeah. So looking at things right now, the teams that are very easily probably going to make like AI siege is working yeah. right now. Yeah, yes, be they're an A, right. but like they've got they've played four. They will probably yeah, end up in the fine. top five easily. My, and they, has only, only played six games also there's also that but they're they're a little higher up than aic at this point so they're they're kind of neck and neck with most of the conference to like they're just kind of AIC a game or two only back. has two non-conference games left and then the rest are yeah. conference then the rest is conference so um now looking at this so oh dan do you want to go over scores from this past weekend for atlantic sure before uh, i keep going holy cross and bentley Played a oh home home series. God. Oh I my god! <laughs> no, he's gonna do this all year now, JJ. Yeah, you listen. If we if we listen, if we keep doing the Kennedy ice dump to him every single week, I think we can take this one. <laughs> it's also been a joke in sports information as long as I've worked there, thanks to Steve Jones. Really? So that's kind of hilarious. All right. Anyways, continue. Uh, so the Crusaders. Decided they were going to make both games the same. Uh, they swept Bentley 2-0 and 2-0. Uh, Rough weekend for Bentley. Wow. Yeah, Holy Cross woke up, guys. <laughs> That's yeah, not good. <laughs> Their nap is holy officially ended. penalties in the Friday game. <laughs> what? And holy penalties in the Saturday game, too. Now, the, ne- now the next question Nate's going to ask is, how many were fighting? How many suspensions? <laughs> And how many suspensions? <laughs> None of them were five minute in Friday's game. Ooh. Uh, oh one... my god! The third <laughs> period. Holy god. <laughs> it's like all hell broke loose in the third. See, this is what happens when I can't watch every Atlantic hockey game simultaneously. I miss all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> this, league, this league is chaos. Oh, it oh, doesn't get any better. Look at look at Army Canisius on Friday. Oh my God, this game was nuts. Oh, that's right. This is the one where there was. This game was insane. <laughs> I forgot that oh Kuznetsov got a spearing major in a game before they put the puck down. This Dan, did at you zero never... at zero? Did you see that I responded to that comment in the Discord with just a clip of Goldberg spearing some guy? Yeah. <laughs> how okay, how did Joey Baez get a 10-minute minor penalty? I'm sorry, what? Oh my god, here we go. We've even gotten through scores on the league and we're confusing That's... Dan's penalty mind. Uh, you're just not I'm looking at CHN, it so it could just be listed, it could be listed weird. It's got to be but, CHN because the league box score says yeah. misconduct, 10-minute misconduct, okay. 10 minutes. This man scores a Michigan goal and then gets a 10-minute misconduct <laughs> literally a minute later. <laughs> it would have been even yeah, funnier but, had it been as a result of the goal. Yes. <laughs> that would have been so hilarious. Canisius was up 3-1. Army went up 4-3, and then Canisius rattled off three unanswered in the third. <laughs> It was insane. There were two spearing majors in this game. <laughs> this game came in episode of WWE's Monday Night Raw. That's what this game was. 72 penalty minutes <laughs> in this game. Good Lord. We thought our penalties were bad. <laughs> I love Atlantic hockey. <laughs> I love this conference so minutes. much. Oh my it's just complete God. and utter chaos. Yet you kind of say every week that we need to get out of it. <laughs> Can we go to ECAC yet? <laughs> Uh, so, like like JJ was getting at, Canisius won 6-4 Friday, but Army picked up their first win of the year 2-1 Saturday. They're literally 1-9 uh, on the season total. That the, is really sad. The Niagara-Robert Morris home-and-home home was a sweep for the Purple Eagles, and those games were actually <laughs> relatively tame. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Can I say, though? Can I say, though? I love the fact that Chad got absolutely crapped on Friday and then <laughs> lost again Saturday. <laughs> Chad Veltry just sucks at Dwyer Arena. It's just a fact. 
dude, I just love the fact that he got the literal crap kicked out of him by his old team. That was just the they would. Thing. So I was reading their post game uh, recap, and they didn't mention his name. They called him the Robert Morris goalie. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't even say his name. They like. All right, if you don't want to say shows how little they like him, there. Chad Valtry, literally, they just didn't mention his name. Just shows how little they care about him there. Like, sorry, you so abandoned great. us. Good riddance. So great. We literally now that that's gonna be a white. We we should just get pictures of Chad Valtry like missing uh-huh. posters. Just tape them to the glass at Dwyer everywhere. You know, do you know how mad I'm gonna be if he doesn't play against us? <laughs> oh my god, they bench be him for so someone sad. else. Oh my god, so no, mad. that'd be amazing. Obviously. Oh, yes. Um, funny. We could just do that. We want Chad chant. Just demand it. Oh, absolutely. The <laughs> the Air Force Mercy Nurse series was. Uh, it seems like the key was to score five goals because Air Force won five <laughs> to two on Saturday. Sorry, because it was a Saturday Sunday series. Gross. And the Lakers won five one Sunday. <laughs> And AIC played out of conference, beating Vermont 2-1 Saturday. Um, it's the week of Thanksgiving, so the schedule kind of is a mess. We got some action. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> we got some action tomorrow night. Yes! Doesn't Canisius play in the MAC? No, they're in the MAC. There's the Mac and the Mac. That just sounded like you just glitched for a good second there. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, that just means so, the MAAC the Matrix is, real. is the like the glitch conference that came out of the Mac. Uh, the Mac. <laughs> yeah. So it's well, the wannabe Mac. Holy Cross hosts Army on Tuesday at seven. Canisius hosts Robert Morris on Tuesday at seven. And AIC has to be different just like us and starts a game at 7.05 against Bentley. And then uh, a mess of mostly non-conference games, but a few conference series thrown in for uh, Black Friday and unnamed Saturday. Canisius hosts a pair of 1 o'clock games against Air Force. Uh, Merrimack yeah. hosts Army s- on Friday and Bentley on Saturday. And, uh, sort oh, of, I see what yeah, they're doing. Yeah, I was gonna mm-hmm. say, sort of they're like flipping. we're doing with Blue and Clarkson and, and Clarkson and later. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. UMass Lowell will host Bentley Friday and Army Saturday. Uh, all of those games are four o'clock. RMU brings Sacred Heart into town for the other conference series. Uh, those are six and one. Uh, Colgate brings Niagara to town. I'm reading the wrong line. The league did not screw the website up. Uh, Colgate and Niagara, seven o'clock, both nights at Class of 65 Arena. Creatively named. I still need to get down there. I haven't been down there yet. I've heard it's an awesome building. I was going to go a couple of years ago when the women played, but I yeah. I forget why I didn't go. Probably because I don't like driving. <laughs> um, Hamilton's also in the middle of nowhere. That's also so. true. <laughs> yeah, um, it's in the middle, literally the middle just of nothing's nowhere. Nothing's there. The civilization just doesn't exist. Even the town barely exists. <laughs> I don't think it would if not for Colgate and Hamilton College. Yeah. Um, Holy Cross brings in Brown on Friday for a single game. Mercyhurst heads to Miami of Ohio uh, for a single game on Friday at 7.05. And AIC heads down to Long Island for a 7.30 game against the LIU Sharks. And the only other game we haven't talked about other than the one that's on Sunday because I didn't scroll down far enough, Mercyhurst hosts a return trip from uh, Miami <laughs> of Ohio at 4. Uh, the only other games that we haven't talked about now that I've actually read the entire schedule are 
a ranked matchup between the RIT Tigers and the UNH Wildcats. There's some metal hardware. I I wouldn't be saying that this year. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> They're good. Um, I don't care. The um, real, real quick before we start, oh. um, we really, really, really would like to see Robert Morris sweep Sacred Heart this weekend. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I would like to see that, please. Chad, yes. if you could not suck a fat one for one week. Chad, weekend. please, for what? Nice. <laughs> this is um, the one weekend, Chad. We're going to hope you don't just kiss all the ass possible. Just please don't suck for once. Ladies for and once. gentlemen, JJ Lang is off the rails. <laughs> no, I'm done. Continue. <laughs> yeah, we were never on him. Thank you, Dan, for your continued support towards my mental health. <laughs> um... Yeah. UNH's opponents UNH. have not taken a major or a game misconduct this year. Please don't make us be the first. Let's change that. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, No, let's not. <laughs> I'm running on like four hours of sleep right now, guys. I work 12 hours today. Let's go. <laughs> the, the Wildcat. UNH, they're good. They, If it weren't for Maine... UNH would be the biggest story in Hockey East. Yep, correct. Who we play Maine in about a month. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Um, I didn't hear that sneeze. The, the mic I muffled shot, it. That's because I shut my mic off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that. never mind. JJ was like, oh, that's so cool. Eh. That was another beautiful technology um, ruining it moment. UNH. Good. I don't know how many more times I need to say it. Um, <laughs> thank you for that astute observation, Nate. <laughs> Let's They're just number twelve for quick. a reason. Maine they beat, exists. They beat at the time number one BU six to four on home ice. The next weekend they beat then number one Quinnipiac five two or five four in overtime. That was a split. Don't care. They are three and zero against Northeastern this year. They beat Dartmouth, and they lost in a shootout to Providence at home and then lost 2 nothing on the road. But Providence is also that team. They are that good. Um, Hockey East is back, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> they had some down years recently. Like, they were good, but, like, they oh. didn't have, like, national powerhouses. Not They're this year back. or not. They are so bad. Yeah, it was a not this year. That was a down year. They're like, whooping everybody. Maine. Maine has been phenomenal, and they're in sixth in that conference. <laughs> oh, man. I, this I, is going to be... So, I think at the beginning of the year, we looked at this game, these games, and we were like, all right, winnable non-conference games at home, right? You know, we should handle them pretty well. And I'm not saying they're not winnable games, but... <laughs> they're going to be no more competitive UNH than UNH was I didn't actually see this be coming. coming. <laughs> I didn't see this coming at all. I don't think anyone thought that UNH was going to be the giant killer they've been this year. Like, they knocked off two number one ranked teams two straight weekends in a row. That is actually insane. Oh, my God. How? Uh, because I mean, they're, they're good. Lucky. Well, <laughs> B, they're uh, BU, BU is the biggest fraud in college hockey. I'm going to say that. Um, Damn. Scoring by committee. That's what they're doing. Which is... Their two leading goal scorers only have 10 opponents. points. <laughs> Because they can just roll out any line and score. And Jacob Helson's given him great goaltending. He's got a 992 goals against and a 951 save percentage, which makes me want to throw up. Or that's scary. <laughs> Wait, that uh, man is on one. Oh uh, my God. What did you say his goals against was? <laughs> you heard it right. <laughs> oh, I know. That's. Then, yeah. A point nine nine two. Point nine nine two. He's given up five goals all year. I I honestly thought you read the wrong one. column. No, that is scary. The percentage is a nine fifty one. So, 
I, I don't like this that is gonna be at all. Friday's game is gonna be one nothing. I guarantee <laughs> it. One nothing. It might be zero zero. It it could end it in a zero be. zero tie. I <laughs> this weekend is going to just be a straight up goal goalie battle. I think we all know it. Hundred percent. It's gonna be goalie so, battle. So if anybody saw my face when we were up three nothing on Notre Dame, I was in complete and utter shock. I'll be honest. If we score more than three goals on this guy, I might have the same face. I might have an aneurysm. <laughs> I will scream like a little girl if we score more than two. <laughs> um, that's what will happen. Yeah, they don't give up a lot of goals. No, that's for sure. Um, yeah, they're seven. They only give up to a little over two goals a game. Now, we only give up a little over two goals a game, but ours is a lot closer to two and a half. He's given up Dan, five goals. They're good. Two yeah. of those goals were power play goals. He's only given up three even strength goals all year. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh sweet mercy. This is not good. Uh, I look at this man's be... stats and I just get more scared every time I keep yeah. going down. Can this other guy play? This Tyler Muselic guy. He's got a three. Can he like just four, get five get and eight, or something? Yeah. I, that I guy's giving feeling, up fourteen goals. I have a feeling I, he I think probably we'll plays both. one of the games. Yeah. Yeah. And I well, wouldn't be surprised I'll, if we see Luke on Saturday. I, I, I'm going to put it this way. It's I don't like seeing guys get it, hurt. But <laughs> <laughs> if he like fell down in the, the building and like broke his nose and couldn't play, I'd be fine with that. Hey, Dre, hey we have an extra skater. <laughs> Make it Doug Scott. <laughs> Dude. Oh, man. Jesus. And let Zoe, him loose. Zoe. <laughs> Dan, get get ready to put a timestamp right now. If Doug oh, Scott scores against this guy, nineteen <laughs> twenty, I'm going to run a lap around GBC, <laughs> and I think you can agree with that. If he scores a goal on this dude, he's gonna. I'm gonna I, run a lap around. I can't GBC. with you, JJ. I can't I'm with not you. Wrong? Am I not? Oh, there's oh. Dan's timestamp. <laughs> also, in. Jacob Helston has not had to make more than 24 saves in a game. Our it's offense is going to have to carve through some <sighs> tough defense. That was good an thing we have a Carter Wilkie sized knife, don't we? That was an unintended Thanksgiving fun. There we go. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> He's losing faith in himself. <laughs> I'm so scared. My confidence level went then, from like here, and it's it's just slowly coming down. Coming down. Well, let's let us let us talk predictions. I'm gonna say this split. team. Th here's the thing. This team is wild enough to score like seven on this guy. Like, yeah, I could see it. How many blocks do they have this year? Probably like 302. 109. That's still, <laughs> still a lot. Oh my God. And, they're, and their opponents? 109. That's actually hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Can we go back to the last time we played you in age? I would love that. Oh, that was more fun. Was amazing. <laughs> the game was incredible. Did you even watch it? Yeah, I watched on TV. Oh, that's cute. I didn't. I, I was like, I'm six. not sure. I knew he existed. I was right. I was ten. So I was ten. Historically, we've played pretty darn well against the Wildcats. <laughs> yeah, we have. At least at the Division One level, we're one and zero. <laughs> and you know, it just happened to be the regional final in 2010. You know, no big deal. <laughs> oh God. You know, it's not like that was that win was the greatest moment in our IT hockey history. I mean, no big deal. Just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> big deal. Um, that 
and like I I know a lot of people listening and you guys have no idea, but like that was the most wild 48 hours <laughs> of my life that weekend. Cause all right, yeah, we win Atlantic hockey, right? Great first time, fifth year D1, great. Go to the tournament, right? And we get put in Albany against Denver. Yeah. The seven-time national champion, Denver. <laughs> Had 15 NHL draft picks and probably the best goalie in the country. Yeah, them. Bang, 2-1 dub. Jared DeMichael is now the GOAT. Um, Next <laughs> night, UNH. 11 NHL draft picks. Top scorer in the country and Bobby Butler. Yeah, you know what he did? Nothing. <laughs> How about three goals from Tyler Brenner, Brent Alexson, and Steven Maddock in a minute and 34 seconds in the second period? <laughs> this game. All time great game. And you know what's funny is like, I, I say the moment was the best moment in RIT hockey history, but this wasn't the best game. It was the Denver game. <laughs> the, Den- the the Denver game the night before was nuts. But anyway, so we're freaking walking out of the Times Union Center in Albany. Like, what just happened on Saturday? And we get back to campus, and there was probably about a thousand people at the Sentinel at one in the morning <laughs> when the bus pulled in. There's video of it. Go find it. It's incredible. I remember seeing the pictures. I remember seeing the pictures of it. The, the video was on the local news too. It was everywhere. The uh, hype on that team was insane. That was the most fun two weeks of all time. <laughs> you you mean this picture? Yeah. That guy right there? Yeah, Little that's Nate. me. Little Nate. Going, what the hell is going on? It's like <laughs> two in the morning. I'm so tired. Why am I awake? <laughs> Oh, no, I knew why you I was awake, tight. JJ. Brother, man, was you're, brother man, your adrenaline was keeping you running. What are you talking about? You weren't. No, you weren't it was more I was 10 years old. I didn't need adrenaline. <laughs> Just sugar. Just running off it. I freaking Just walk sugar. into I think I wore my RIT jersey to school for two weeks. <laughs> that sounds Not right. even kidding. That sounds like Not you. even kidding. Oh, my God. That was the greatest two weeks ever. Just the lead up to that. And, yeah, we got killed in Detroit, but. It, we lost to Wisconsin. But I was talking with somebody about it recently. That that was, they nicknamed that Frozen Four the Frozen Boar. The scores were eight one, seven one, and five nothing. Jeez. Yeah, not the so CBS Sports. So CBS Sports, when they did their three stars of the tournament, gave the RAT corner crew the third star of the tournament. <laughs> I don't remember that. That's great. That was awesome, man. We were the only team that didn't wear red either. And the <laughs> one seed in our the one seed in our regional and the two seed. The one and two seeds in our regional both wore red. Spoiled the party. Wild. Cinderella was dancing that year, man. Came close, but that? no cigar. Boys, boys. Can we do that again? You will ha- you will have the most fun two weeks of your life. <laughs> in that week, in those weeks, um, can before we also win the two games the after week. that? Yeah. So I was at, so I was actually talking to my dad, right? And we were talking about you know RAT back to the Frozen Four, great woohoo! But like at that point, we got to win, and not just one game because my dad says he never wants to watch RAT lose a national championship game ever again after two thousand one, and. And I'm like, you know, I'd be happy if we got to the national championship. And he goes, I wouldn't be. <laughs> I want to win it. I'm with him. I'd be yeah. so pissed if we lost. Oh, that- my God. I'd be one miserable dude for like a month straight. Yeah, that was that was so much fun. I, I put the I put the post game from the UNH game. And I don't know, just this week is bringing up a lot of memories. And I'm sure Friday they'll be flowing. But. I'll post somebody posted the whole game replay on YouTube from RIT UNH. I'll make sure to put it in there. You guys got to watch it. It is. I'll have to rewatch it. It is the greatest moment in RIT history when the clock hit zero. It just, you can see the, the corner crew, which was 
two busloads of people plus more more than that just in a full section like the whole uh, the rest of the rink is freaking empty like there was only 3,800 people at this game but I guarantee you 3,500 of them were wearing orange I believe it and if they weren't wearing orange they were the Cornell fans cheering for RIT (laughs) 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 um that stayed because uh Cornell uh lost I'm telling you man Albany would the NCAA was really praying for a Cornell RAT regional final because that place would have been jammed. <laughs> that would have been actually insane. That would have, Holy the, crap. the entire town of Ithaca would have been there. <laughs> and all of Rochester probably would have pulled up the next day also. Oh my god, it was <laughs> nuts, man. People it, from Ithaca College would have shown up to the root against Cornell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That was a year, man. That was so oh. much fun. That uh-huh. team was so good. That there's a reason there's a banner in GPC for it, and there's a reason we have GPC. It mm-hmm. was that team. I I think they still build a new arena because they were talking about it beforehand. But it certainly just helps. just want to also make it clear that my dad handed Doctor Cooper one dollar in the Sentinel and said, "Here's to the new arena," <laughs> and she couldn't take it. But there's, I'm going to be putting a lot of pictures from that game in Discord this week. So good. A little reminiscing. Until Friday. And then it's go time. Do we all do good? Do we all we do have predict- an... predictions in? I don't know if I want to give one. You I'm should. I'm too scared. No, do I'm it. too scared. Split. I'm saying I'll split. I'll go split. I'll go Not feeling quite so confident after all the stats. I'm gonna go a loss and a tie. Probably Dan, zero zero in the tie. Dan, I hate you. Hey, I'm okay with being wrong. Listen, you're allowed to have your opinions, but they're probably wrong. Um. Um. Also, Nate, you need to make me a promise. I'm gonna make you make me this promise alive on air. When this team gets to the next rank in the national rankings, if they when they get to 19 or 18 above 20, you better damn well make the song on the story higher by Creed, or I'm going to be very upset with you. <laughs> when we get above 18, I'll make it higher because that's as high as we got last year. So, no, I think it should just be higher every week they get up rank. That's what it should be because that song is goaded and it belongs on the story once a week if we get a rank. Yeah. Don't disrespect Creed. People will come after you, my friend. They will come after you for that. Good. <laughs> that song is not that good. <gasps> oh, and this is where people start unsubscribing from you saying that. I've heard better. You, you, wow. I've heard better. I may unsubscribe from this channel now. <laughs> I dream you say that. Debuting next Anyways. week. Hey, Corner Crew with only <laughs> Nate and Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Corner Crew podcast with JJ playing Creed in the background the entire time, getting us copyright strikes. Um, (laughs) Please do not do that. (laughs) Please do not do that. No, I'll just sing it. That's what I'll do. Pull up the fight song for Syracuse when we were talking about it earlier. I don't want to get copyright strikes. Um, if you guys are going to be on Nesson too, by the way. So on TV all over New England. I think there was so a, gonna, we look good on TV. I think there was an alum that was looking to get a watch party at a, a bar in Waltham together. I believe yeah. that is correct. That was in Discord. Uh if anybody yeah, if no one if no one else, if no one's got anything else to say, I can start wrapping it up. Anybody got final thoughts? Not really. Yeah. All right. So with that being said, we're gonna wrap it up right here. If you have not already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell so you are notified when every new episode of the pod goes live. Join the Discord like we've mentioned a million and a half times during this podcast. It is very fun. Nate's going to put a bunch of stuff about 2010 in there, which is always great to reminisce on that because that was one hell of a season for us. Um, <laughs> literally. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, literally. Um, Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Fine. Sorry. Mid. <laughs> Um, Discord link is in social media and also is in the description of this video. 
uh, on top, what is also in the description of this video is the social media links as well. Instagram is pretty big. We're getting close to 2,000 followers. We're still working out a contest for who's going to get what when there's a 2,000th follower. That'll be great. Um, Twitter is still a thing. I'm not, or X, whatever the hell you want to call it now. Um, I don't know if we're doing anything with that anymore. Nate, Nate, you're the question. You're the person to ask that question to, I guess. Yeah, not really. Yep. So... <laughs> Pretty much just look for Instagram because that's where all the fun stuff happens. Um, Spotify and Apple Podcasts are also still a thing. You can follow us on there as well. We will see you guys next weekend. Please have a very happy Thanksgiving. Go Tigers. Roll Tech.